All right, this morning, uh, I want to do a lesson on the holiness of God. Now, first of all, I think it is sorely needed in today's Christian communities and in our local churches. Uh, I, uh, I told this to some of the guys earlier yesterday, I was watching the news and... Uh, and this is not a criticism. It, it's you, you know me. I don't criticize other churches and other denominations and other preachers from the pulpit. That uh, I just don't think that's what the pulpit's for. Mm -hmm. But I heard a story yesterday, a, a true one. I saw it for myself. So uh, they were interviewing a pastor in the Metroplex, and what he's doing is a very good thing. Uh, he's there's one. It's a mega church with lots of money and lots of people, so they can do this. They set up their own little organization within the church to, uh, uh, to help people find jobs. Uh, and that in itself is a very good thing. But of all the jobs that they have helped people get, the one that they picked out to interview where they got some folks a job is a brewery. And there was silence in heaven for 30 minutes. You know, I mean, could they at least have picked somebody that's going to go to work at Walmart, but make an alcohol beverage? And they're so proud, you know. Anyway, now I was going to do this one on holiness a long time before I saw that yesterday. I, this is not a, I got mad and so I'm going to vent this morning. It's not that kind of a deal at all. God said, be ye holy, for I am holy. The Bible says, Romans 12, I've used it here a lot, uh, that we're to give ourselves to the Lord, to be his vessels. And then the next verse is that be not conformed to the world. Amen. Now, you know, I've, I've been around the block a few years, like some of us been here a long time. I remember as a young man when, when churches took a pretty strong stand against alcohol because it destroys lives, it destroys families. Our highways now are a bloodbath because of alcohol. Uh, and, and yet today our churches are helping people get into that industry. Matter of fact, I'll tell you something. And again, I'm just telling the story. I'm not passing judgment on anything or anybody. But uh, the church we were in, uh, when we finally moved out of Cleveland into the suburbs, and it's a good solid church, Somebody in the church took a job where they would have to sell alcohol to the public. And the church disciplined that person. Now, I'm not going to tell you what that discipline was, but the church disciplined that person. Because the Bible does say, Woe to him that giveth his neighbor drink. Talking about alcohol. So we've come along. And, and not some things we've come along with that were good. Some things we've come along with that aren't good. But I'm telling you, and, and, and again, it, it's not so much, I want you to know that I believe what I'm fixing to say here, and I try to practice it. Am I doing a good job? Of course not. But I'm trying. And I want you to try to. But folks, it's time that the holiness of God becomes center stage again in our churches. So, my text is uh, Revelation 15, 4. Uh, Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name, for thou only art holy? There is a principle that works in the physical, that also works in the spiritual life.
cause, effect, and response. The cause is the holiness of God. The effect is our worshiping of Him. And the response should be in our life. Belief produces practice. Now let me explain a few things about the holiness of God. God is independently, infinitely, immutably, unchangeable, holy. The most common name and the most common characteristic in the Bible is the holiness of God. In 1 John chapter 1, His holiness described uh, is described as inapproachable light. First John 1 5, God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. Holiness is the very center and excellency of His divine nature. Acts 15 11, glorious in holiness. God's holiness stands as the very antithesis of moral defilement. Putting that statement in just everyday applicable language it is simply this. You can't walk with the world and walk with God. You can't have the standard of God and the standard of the world. Second Chronicles 20, 21, that they should praise the beauty of holiness. Power is God's arm. Omniscience or all-knowing is his eye. Mercy are his bowels. Eternity is his duration. But holiness is his beauty. It's God's holiness which renders him lovely to those of us who are delivered from sin's dominion. How can you be saved? How can you be delivered from dominion, from the dominion of sin? How can you have the new nature in and then still have pleasure and continual practice in sin. Yes, See, you. it's it's uh, it's an inconceivable uh, uh, precept. Yes. Uh, now, let me qualify something. That doesn't mean that we don't sometimes slip up. It doesn't mean that sometimes old habits don't creep back in before we have the opportunity to deal with them. But God's standard and, and I, I take exception with some who make the Christian life uh, easy and uh, fun and uh, uh, one big party. Folks, uh, uh, Christianity is the joy of my life and your life, but there are some things about the Christian life that yes. are not easy. Amen. Wasn't look, at, look at the history of Christianity. And we in America up to this point, thank God, are truly blessed to be free in Christ and in practice. By the way, we're even free in Christ under the worst persecution. But we're also able to have uh, uh, practice. This is not true in much of the world today. But we're so blessed that we're still free in practice. So, the most often name used of God in Scripture is His holy name. It is His greatest title of honor. It is His holiness that is practiced before His throne. In Isaiah chapter 6, when we get a when, when the veil of time is rolled back just a little bit and we are uh, uh, we get a vision 
of the glimpse of the seraphims, which are angels particularly created for the sole purpose of being in the presence of God. And what are they doing? They're crying, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord of hosts. We will, that will be part of our responsibility and, and our privilege and our duty when we get to heaven. We're going to be so busy worshiping yeah. the Lord Amen. and praising the Lord and magnifying His holiness till uh, so much of what we hear even in songs today is just going to pale into insignificance. God said this in Psalms 89, 35. Once have I sworn by my holiness. When he can swear by nothing greater, he swears by himself and by his holiness. Again, it is a fuller expression of himself than anything else. The attribute of God's holiness runs through all the rest and gives them their beauty. Psalms 27 4 talks about the beauty of holiness. Psalms 110 3 talks about again the beauty of holiness. Holiness is the splendor of every attribute in the Godhead. For example, his justice is a holy justice. His wisdom is a holy wisdom. His power is a holy arm. His truth is holy truth. Psalms 103.1 His name is holy. So, let me break that down into several practical things to help us in our walk for the Lord. Uh, number one, let me say this. God's holiness is manifested in all His works. Never has, does not now, never will do anything that isn't holy and good and right and just and perfect. Psalms 145, 17. The Lord is righteous in all His ways and holy in all His works. Now you take the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, from creation to consolation, and everything in between. Everything that God ever has, does now, and will do is holy and perfect and pure and good. You see, only excellency can come from God. That's our God. Only excellency can come from God. When God created the world, what did He say when it was done? He looked at it. He saw that everything that He had done and made, and it was good. Man, Ecclesiastes 7, 29, created in His own image. And folks, even in our fallen state and in our spiritually redeemed state, we still... I'm always amazed at what man can do in a, in a sinful state. Can you imagine a brain working 100% instead of 9, 10, or 11%? Look what man is doing with 9, 10, 10. At best, 10 or 11% of his brain is working. And look what we can do. Look what man has created. Can you imagine a brain working 100%? Whew. Well, of course we can't. The makeup of our body. God made us. Now, I don't know about you, but I resent being told that my grandparents were monkeys. I just, I, I kind of, my grandparents were godly people. Now, some of you are king folks. I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, God made us. 
and, and th even this body, which is only temporary, it's only made for 70, 80, 90 years. Uh, uh, but but even, even now, our bodies are, f God said, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. God made this body. Boy, what a body it is. My goodness. Just think of the eye. Just the eye. Nothing else. Fearfully and wonderful me. And then God made the angels in, in Jude chapter 6. The angels, they, angels are not little gods. Angels are created beings. They're spiritually created beings to serve God and serve us as God deems fit. Even about Jesus, even on earth, he hath done all things well. God's holiness is manifested in his works. Even in this fallen world. It, I'm always amazed that we just have to spend millions and millions and millions and millions and millions to do some kind of a survey, to do some research, to try to figure things out. And uh, now our smart uh, psychologists and psychiatrists have figured out that there is something holistically healthy for people to take a nice stroll out in the country. The Bible said that for free. I, I, I always remember way back, and, and ladies, you'll chuckle with this. Um, uh, Yale was given millions years ago. Now, May, Yale University was given millions by the federal government to try to figure out at what day after birth, at what day or at what time is the best to circumcise a male. Guess what they came up with? Day number eight. The Bible already said that for free. Everybody that knows me knows I am a weather geek. Just give me the weather, keep all your bad news. Just give me the weather. I love the weather patterns. And they've got these multi-million dollar computers now. To tell them what? The Bible says the wind starts in the northwest and goes to the southeast, runs its full circle again, and starts over again. Snow comes out of the north, warm comes out of the south, rain comes out of the southeast, hot weather comes out of the south. The Bible says all that. But we couldn't accept that. We have to have, to have our way of doing it. Look, God's Ways are absolutely, immutably, eternally perfect. Amen. Well, that's enough. Let me move on because I'm I'm going to run out of time. Secondly, God God's holiness is manifested in His Word. You want to know how to live to please God? Get in the Word. Yes. Get in the Word. Let me go back up, first of all, to the Old Testament law. The law forbids sin in all its modifications. Period. Romans 7, 12, the law is holy, the commandment holy, and just and good. Uh, let me read you uh, Psalms 19. Psalms 19. Verse 8 and 9. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord... Fear in the Old Testament is the New Testament word faith with an added addendum. The fear of the Lord in the Old Testament also means 
hatred of evil and love of good. The fear of the Lord is clean and during forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Uh, you don't have to agree with my little analysis here. But again, California's burning. And again, the fires are bigger than last year. Each year, the fires get bigger. Now, there's a human side. Uh, you know, to everything in life, there's a human side and a divine side. The human side is people have moved and are living where bears are supposed to live. We've moved into the woods. We've moved into the mountains. But there's a divine side. We have just now, the Democratic Party, and I'm, this is not a political statement, I'm making a spiritual statement here. Uh, we are now, uh, they've picked a lady to be vice president, and uh, I don't know if you know this about her, but she was the driving force. California was the first state to legalize all forms of sexual immorality of every kind and form. She was the driving force. She was the Attorney General who drove the legislature to legalize men and men being married and women and women being married. And the last thing she did of an earth-shaking thing, she now has required the penitentiaries in California if men want to be converted to women, the state has to pay for those surgeries. This is the lady that is now going to be the vice president, if they get elected. Look, I'm not making a political statement, but I'm telling you this. The Bible is right because it was written by a holy God. And when you go against it, you're heading for trouble. It's all a, a, never mind the political scene. Uh, I, I'm telling you, God, a holy God, wrote a holy book. Yes. Amen. And you can't go against it. Yeah. Without negative consequences. Let me move on. Let me try to cover a few more things. God, the ultimate expression of God's holiness was at the cross. Amen? The atonement is God's greatest display of His holiness and of His hatred of sin. None of the judgments of God pass present, future, declare God's holiness as does the cross. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because at that moment, the sins, our sins were on God, the Son. And a holy God cannot look at sin. Psalms 22.3, for thou art holy. Let me uh, put this under a separate point, but elaborate this a little more. Uh, because God is holy, he hates all sin. He has to. Humans wink at sin. God cannot wink at sin. Let me read to some really strong verses. Uh, Proverbs 3.22, the fro word, that would be the arrogant, the proud, uh, those who are against God, the fruit word is an abomination to the Lord. Now that's strong. Proverbs 15, 26, the thought of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. God forgives sinners, but not sin. You ever thought about that? The sinner must die 
Because that's what God said in the law. And unless I was doomed to die spiritually, not just physically, spiritually, but uh, unless a substitute came in to take my place, I had to die and you had to die. But praise God, a substitute did step in. Amen. Jesus, the Son of God. Amen. The thought of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. God gave us Christ. What does God think of sin? Well, think about this a minute. I wrote several things down. God banished Adam and Eve from the garden for one sin. Because of Ham's sin of homosexuality, his whole posterity are cursed. Moses. 40 years of what he did, the miracles and the glory and the honor and, 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 and the greatest man in the Old Testament, but for one sin, he was excluded from Cain. Elisha's, Elijah's servant who stole some stuff was smitten with leprosy. For, for, for one sin, Ananias and Sapphira died. Yes. You know why? Because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. And the only reprieve is when we run to Jesus Christ yeah. and get under the blood. The truth of divine scriptures prove his holiness. Only a holy God would tell the truth like it is. Psalms 5.5 5, Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Psalm 7.11 God is angry with the wicked every day. And let me give you one more thing and I'll wind it down. So I'm going to make three points of application. Because God is holy, acceptance with Him on the grounds of creature doing is utterly impossible. Is that important? Well, oh, you better believe it, because most people uh, think that uh, their deeds are good enough to get them into heaven. There's a Bible doctrine that is largely either discounted or denied or ignored. And that is when Adam, as the federal head of the human race, sinned that he plunged the whole race into sin. We're born with a sin nature. You don't become a sinner the first time you sin. You are born a sinner. It's our nature. Take a brand new baby. It can already lie. As soon as it can figure out in the infant ways that uh, if mama holds me, it feels good. So they cry just to be held. They don't need their diaper change. They don't, they're not, they're not hungry. They're, there's no issues, not feeling bad. But the kid knows how to get attention, so he cries. He's lying. You're not wrong with the kid. All the mamas are saying, man, man. By the way, we all respond to that, didn't we? Big time! We hate to hear a child cry. Here's a, here's a verse that I've never heard a public verse. Isaiah 64, Isaiah 64, 6. All our righteousness, all our doing is as filthy rags in the sight of God because of our sin nature. So, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith. 
It is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. We've all known all of our lives, we were taught it young, and we've seen it play out in our lives over and over and over. The hardest person to win to the Lord Jesus Christ is a real, moral, honest man. I passed in one church in my life that was a wealthy church. I had doctors, lawyers, a federal judge in my church uh, in Arlington. Uh, the church was in a good part of town. It was the hardest place I've ever been in my whole life to go knocking on doors and invite people to church. Because they were rich, they were wealthy, uh, they, were, they had jobs that really were serving the public, the judge, the doctors, the lawyers. And the attitude you would always get when you go knock on these doors is, what are you doing here? We, we, we don't need you. And then I had one, I've had several poorer congregations, but one in particular was uh, I pastored the Liberty Baptist Church in Kennedale, Texas. Now, I was when I was a young man. I mean, I'm drifting. You know, old people drift back. You know that, don't you? Right, Brother Hunter? Right, Brother Hunter? We, we remember stuff 50 years ago. We don't know what we did yesterday, but boy, we know what we did 55 years ago. Anyway, I pastored. Liberty Baptist Church in Kennedale, Texas. Now, Kennedale's been sucked up by Arlington, and it's not like that anymore. When I was in Kennedale, it was a little town of 3,000 people. It was still isolated. 60% uh, of the town was on welfare. The industry in Kennedale, Texas was wrecking yards. I saw more people saved at that church than any other place I've been anywhere in my life. There was Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. I would baptize two, three, four, five, sometimes as many as ten. These people were poor and starving and knew they needed God. Amen. That which holiness demanded, grace has provided in Christ Jesus our Lord. Every poor sinner who's fled to Christ for refuge stands, Ephesians 1, 6, accepted in thee, beloved. It's God's holiness. Three things. Number one, because God's holy, we owe him our utmost reverence in our approach to him. We're not going to a good buddy. We're not going to Santa Claus. We are going to the supreme, awesome, Amen. invisible, supernatural, super powerful, sovereign of the universe, Yahweh, God, Jehovah, Jesus Christ, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit. Two verses. Isaiah 90. Uh, excuse me, uh, Psalms. Psalms 89, 7. Psalms 89, 7. God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. Psalms 99, 5. Psalms 99, verse number 5. Exalt ye the Lord our God and worship at his footstool, for he is holy. Remember what God uh, said to Moses when he saw that bush burning and it wasn't burned up and he went over there to see what's going on. God spoke. He said, stop, take off the shoes off your feet for the place you're standing on is holy. Psalms 
Secondly, because God is holy, we should desire to be conformed to His image. 1 Peter 1.16, Be ye holy, for I am holy. 1 Peter 1.15, In all manner or deportment, be ye holy. And then thirdly, in my conclusion, is 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 23. Now the Lord God, sanctify you, set you apart, holy, completely, with the devil, holy. Your whole body and soul and spirit be preserved blameless. It's a lot to chew on. It's a lot to think about. You know, kids, our kids bear to some degree our image. A Christian, a child of God, should to some degree bear the image of our Father, which is in heaven. One quick thought. I'm going a little over, but one quick thought. The sin that finally got Israel kicked out of, out of Israel, got, got kicked out of Canaan, was they left their pilgrim likeness to be like God, and they became like all the heathen nations and took on their manner of life. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what our churches are doing today. Yes, I can. And it won't. Our Heavenly Father, I pray that uh, this message, this lesson will speak to our hearts, put the desire in of us to work on this being like Jesus. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.